Hello guys, again, I'm not gonna be able to be in the video. I have some homework to finish, but I have a friend who's gonna help you with that. So pay close attention and I'll see you in the next one. Hi guys, Luis here. Today I'm gonna be helping you with a really exciting topic and it is called modeling with sequences. Before we start, let's remember that there are two types of sequences. Arithmetic and geometric. In the arithmetic, we're gonna use addition. It has a slope intercept form and a constant rate of change. The geometric, we're gonna multiply. This has an exponential growth and it has different rates at each term. And we're gonna explain that in a little bit. Let's review our first example. A section of a stadium has 40 rows of seats. If there are 15 seats in the first row and each row has two more seats than the one before, how many seats are there in the last row? If we analyze this a little bit, we're gonna find three main things. The 40 rows of seats, the 15 seats in the first row, and that each row has two more seats than the one before. Now that we know that we're adding, we know that we're working with an arithmetic problem. So here is our formula. For that, a sub one is gonna be equal to our initial term. That is 15, 15 seats in the first row. And our common difference two because we have two more seats than the one before and since we are looking for how many seats are there in the last row and that's row number 40 or n it's gonna be 40. Now following our formula n sub 40 that it is gonna be equal to the number of seats in the last row it's the initial term 15 plus the common difference multiplied by the number of rows that we are looking for. Since we already have the first one, we're only looking for the next 39. And that's going to be equal to 15 plus 78, and that's equal to 93. But this is not our final answer. Since we are giving context, we need to give our solution in context. So the final answer could be, there are 93 seats in the last row. Now let's work on the second example. A new computer was sold for a thousand dollars. If the value of the computer at the end of each year, it's only 80% of the value of the previous year, how much will the computer be? worth after three years. Now let's look for important things. Let's say that the first one is the thousand dollars that the computer was sold for. The second one is the 80% and the third one is the three years. And because we know that the value of the computer is going to be changing because of our rate, we can assume that this is going to be a geometric problem. And here is our formula for that. In this one, our initial term, it's gonna be a sub one equal to a thousand dollars. A rate 0.8 or 80% and our last term, our n is gonna be equal to four. And I'm gonna explain that at the end. Following our formula, a sub four or a on our last term it's going to be equal to a thousand dollars multiplied times our rate 0.8 with an exponent of n minus 1 4 minus 1 equal to 3 so our answer for that it's going to be equal to 512 and remember because we're giving context we need to give our answer in context so the value of the computer after three years will be $512.
Now for the confusing part, why n is equal to 4? Remember that n is based on terms, not time, so those three years are not going to be n. Our first term is going to be equal to $1000, the first value of the computer. Our second term, or after our first year, it's going to be equal to 800 or third term, after the second year, it's going to be equal to $640. And our last term, after three years, the final value of the computer, it's going to be equal to $512.